Hey, it's Nathan with Crazy on Marketing. In this video, I'm gonna show you a way to transfer your ClickFunnels orders over to Shopify. And this method is about 5% automated, 95% manual, and it uses the free version of Zapier and Google Sheets. Now, the free version of Zapier is only good for 100 tasks. And depending how well your OTOs and downsells convert, this could be like 50 to maybe 70 orders. So it's not going to last you a whole long time, hopefully, uh, but it will at least get the ball rolling and get you started in the right direction. So first things first, what you're going to want to do is navigate to this sales funnel tracker and I'll have a link to it down below. And you want to go ahead and go to file and you'll see the option for make a copy. So you'll click make a copy and then you're going to make a copy of this file on your Google Drive. So once you do that, you'll have access to it and you can edit it and all that stuff. There will be an option for like add to Google Drive. Do not click that option. That is not what you want. You want to go ahead and make a copy on your Google Drive. So once you have a copy of this Google Sheet on your Google Drive, then we can go ahead and get started. Now let's head over to Zapier real quick and we'll go to make a zap in the top, top area here. And I'm just gonna call it 595 because again, this is 5% automated, 95% manual. But you'll probably wanna name your zap the same name as your funnel so that we can keep track of everything. And the first thing we need to do is go ahead and select our trigger app. And what we're gonna be looking for is click funnels. So we're gonna look for click funnels and we're gonna be tracking for new purchases. So select new purchases, save and continue. Now, if you haven't connected your ClickFunnels account yet, you can go ahead and connect it right here. It's really simple. You just click this button and follow the instructions on the next page. If you do have your account connected, go ahead and just select it, save and continue. And then we're gonna go ahead and select the funnel that we want to watch for purchases. So click this little drop down here and wait for it to load. And then select the funnel that you want to go ahead and track. In my case, it's the Shopify sales funnel. So I'll select this option. And then funnel steps, I want to track all funnel steps. So I'll hit continue. And then it says, make sure you have at least one recent purchase created and make sure it matches the trigger options you picked below. So if you haven't already, go through your funnel. You can submit a test order just to get that test data into the funnel. And then you can go ahead and fetch and continue. Make sure that you get a test successful message here and you can go ahead and view your purchase details and see if they look kind of okay. Like you should notice like an email address, like here's my email address right here. So that looks like my most recent order. So that seems like it makes sense. We'll come down here, hit continue. And now we need to go ahead and set up an action app. And in our case, it's gonna be Google Sheets. So we'll search for sheet, Google Sheets. We're going to go ahead and create spreadsheet row, hit save and continue. If you haven't already connected your Google Sheets account, you'll do that right here. Hit save and continue. Now we'll go ahead and select our spreadsheet. So select the drop down menu and then you'll be able to select the spreadsheet that you created a copy of on your drive. So select that option and then you're going to go ahead and select the worksheet. So I've got sheet one right here and it'll go ahead and pull in all the columns of your spreadsheet. So the first column we have here is order date and order date. And to do this, I always enter the Zapier code for meta human now. And that basically enters a, a human readable date. So you just copy and paste this little code right in here and it'll automatically populate with a human readable date. And I'll have that code down below so you can just copy and paste that. Up next we have status, which represents order status. And so we'll select this option here search for status and we find it right here and it says that it's going to be paid now there are a few other status options here like failed and i think there's a couple other ones but ultimately you're going to want to make sure that it is a paid status before you go ahead and process any order so we want to go ahead and track status so we'll select that option up next we're going to do the product so the product the individual ordered and we'll come to search product and we'll scroll on down until we find the product names Scroll, scroll, scroll. And I got product's name right here. So product's name, paid. So we see how much money they paid and we can kinda compare that to the products they ordered and just 
make sure that we are getting paid the right amount that we think we are. So we see that option here for products amount fractional. And so it gives you the number of pennies somebody paid for your product right there. Now first name, pretty self-explanatory. We'll go ahead and search for first. And I always select the contact contact profile first name field. So go ahead and select that. Come in here, we'll search for last. Contact contact profile last name. And you'll note there is a contact last name as well, but I always do the contact contact profile last name as opposed to like the contact last name. I don't really know what the difference is here, but I know that contact contact profile, last name, first name, email, etc. work. So I always select the contact, contact option. So contact, contact, last name, email, search for email, contact, contact, profile, email, phone. If you collected the phone number, you could find it here or do contact, contact, profile, phone. Scrolling down to address, we'll search for ship. Contact, contact, profile, shipping address, city, ship so contact contact profile shipping city state ship contact contact profile shipping state zip zip contact contact profile shipping zip country country Oops. contact contact profile shipping country processed by when and notes so this is for like administrative purposes right here. So process by. So if you have like some VAs that are processing orders, you could go ahead and have them enter their name here and when they entered the order and then notes if that's applicable or not. So these are kind of the admin fields, which is why they're in yellow here. So I'm going to go ahead and leave them blank because Zapier doesn't need to do anything with them. I'll go ahead and hit continue. And so this is what the data is that will be passed into my Google Sheet. So I can go ahead and hit create and continue. And it says test successful. So if I come over to my sheet, I'll see that it's gone ahead and pushed all that information into my Google Sheet right here. So that's pretty cool. But let's head over to Zapier and hit finish and turn the zap on. So now every single purchase order that comes through my funnel will appear on this sheet. So let me run through the funnel real quick and show you what I mean by that. So let me pop up in here, pop my funnel up. Drag. And I'll go ahead and submit a test order. So, and I'll go ahead and insert my test credit card information. Complete my order. And I'll go ahead and add OTO number one to my order. And I'll also add OTO number two to my order. And so here's my order confirmation page. I get ordered the super awesome product, OTO number one and OTO number two. So let's head back over to my Google Sheet and see what the order looks like over there. All right, so this is what the order looks like on the spreadsheet here. And as you can see, it does it like line by line. So we have like OTO one product name, OTO two product name, and then our initial offer product name, which I have called Super Awesome Product. And you can also see that it is not in order. Like we have OTO1, OTO2, and then our initial offer product. So this spreadsheet can be a little hard to read from time to time. You just want to make sure like your first name and last name and email address all match up. And it's not too bad to keep track of, but it is something to be mindful of. So anyway, once you have an order come out to your spreadsheet here, we need to go ahead and insert it into Shopify. So head over to your Shopify store and you want to be in the orders area, all orders, and then you can do create order. And first things first, you're going to want to go ahead and find or create a customer over here. So search customers and you'll probably do create a new customer unless this is an old customer in which case you wouldn't create a new one but probably 99% of the time you will create a new customer so create a new customer and then we just essentially copy and paste this information here so first name first name last name last name email address email address customer accepts email marketing and then we got our address information address, address line one, city, city, state and zip, so, and country here, so United States, state, 
Virginia zip save customer so now we have a customer here now we need to go ahead and add our products so we just look here for like the product name so I didn't name my products appropriately you'd probably call your products like the name of the actual product and not OTO1 or OTO2 or super awesome product so please forgive my product naming right here because you'd probably call it what it is but for the sake of our example, I'll just go ahead and select a few products. So let's do browse products, popular products, and we'll go with, we'll say that the orange paracord is the initial product, add to order, and then we'll come back in here, browse products, and we'll find our OTO1. We'll say it's this product right here, and then we'll go ahead, browse products, and We'll say that this is OTO number two right here. And we'll be like, okay, this looks good. And we're going to go ahead and mark it as paid. And it's going to say, did you receive payment for this order outside of Shopify? And you did because you received it in ClickFunnels. So you'll go ahead and hit create order. And now your order is sitting here waiting to be fulfilled. And hopefully you know how to fulfill orders beyond this point. And of course, once you're done with Shopify here, you can come over here to the process by. So you can insert your name here or your VA or whomever is processing these orders and then insert, insert when this order was processed. And test, test. And there we go. So this spreadsheet will automatically update every time an order processes through ClickFunnels. And then you essentially take this information from the spreadsheet, place it into your Shopify store and process the order this way. And so in doing this, it's about 5% automated and then 95% manual. So it's probably not the preferred method to do this. However, it is free up to a certain point and it's enough to get you started. And that is what we're going for right here.